a lot of times when we're traveling, unless you're literally going to the beach and just going to veg out on the beach all day, a lot of times when we're traveling, we're sightseeing or doing some other kind of fun activities. And there's usually a lot of walking. And you do not want your vacation day one to be blisters and all the things. It's not the time to break an issue. You can buy new shoes for your trip, but make sure you are breaking them in. Your daytime shoe should be something that you know is super comfortable for you that you love. What's up, Style Nation? Welcome to the podcast. So excited to be here. Um, fair warning. My AC has not been working for weeks. Well, it's been working when it wants to be working. So you might hear some racket in the background, but it's summertime and we're all doing our best. (laughs) That's all I can say. Summer's in full swing and wow, might be having a little bit of PTSD from COVID, but with everyone in the house, but put that to the side. That's why we're here and we're podcasting. And today is actually all about summer and I'm really, really excited So I just did a live on IG and I haven't, I've been posting here and there, but to be fully transparent, I've been posting and ghosting because Instagram is not good for my soul. It makes me feel like, not that I'm not good enough, it makes me feel like I'm not doing enough. And that is something I always, always, always struggle with no matter what. So I was doing a live and I haven't done one in a long time and I'm really nervous, but It's a full closet reveal. So you have to go um, check me out on Instagram if we're not already friends at Katie Allen Stylist. And you can see, I really need to start doing video now that I have this amazing closet. It's not even a closet anymore. Let's be real. It's my office. I keep calling it a closet. And it is, but it isn't. It's a clawfist. It's officially a clawfist. So What's up, Style Nation? Let's start this all over again. What's up, Style Nation? Live from the closet. I can't even say it. Live from the Clawfist. Katie just styled, instead of HQ, we'll call it the CQ, the Closet Quarters. And today's episode is all about packing and creating your perfect travel capsule. Really excited for this episode because, like I said, it's summertime. Now, summer is absolutely fucking hands down my favorite season. I love it. Even the fucking blistering fucking heat. Fucking love it. I take it so much more over the winter. I hate the winter. But what I love the most is waking up at 5 a.m. to sun and going to bed at 9 a.m. with sun. Like, that's a dream come true for me. Anyways, I am really excited for this episode. So, one of my big goals when I, and again, I know this is really all in my own head and you don't care. But one of the reasons I really wanted to change the name of the podcast and like kind of create this new direction for it is I wanted to continue to lean into mind stuff and mindset stuff and all the juicy topics we cover from human design and Enneagram and all the amazing success mentors and life coaches and all the people that come on the show to talk about mindset because I'm a mindset junkie. I love it. It's amazing. But I also wanted to do some really tactical travel, travel, very tactical style episodes on sharing tricks of the trade on how to do the style things. And I don't know why, but for some reason that felt like it needed a rebrand and it just didn't feel aligned with just realized and what it was born out of. So That's something I want to explore more and more is getting into the weeds on providing value in this space. So thanks for being here. I'm super excited. And to be fully honest with you, what I think is so fun about this episode is I know this is audio, but these are really good tips and we can share this audio is um, this is actually the exact same content that I will be doing my style squad call this Thursday with all of my current or past clients. Anyone that's ever worked with me gets invited, is on a special little email list, gets invited to my quarterly style squad calls. Hop on the phone. I usually bring um, whatever seasonal trends, seasonal transitions, and create space, one, for all the ladies to meet each other because they're all amazing, and 
we talk about um, style related topics. And this um, corner is all about how to create the perfect travel capsule. And full circle, I'm not sure which or if any of my clients listen to my podcast, but my very first client ever, one of the sessions her and I did together was on travel. And I was, well, of course, I was nervous all the time I was working with her because I was like, do I know what the fuck I'm doing? And I have to tell you a little secret. It's funny because I have a message from her that I just saw a second ago. I actually went back into my email folder and looked up the email I sent her when we did it. And I was like, holy shit, this shit is amazing and still super relevant. Even, you know, I'm certified now. I've practiced. I've had many more clients. I'm so much better (laughs) than I was when her and I worked together. But I felt really good that I was like, yes, if you have the passion for something, it does, the certification really means nothing. I wanted to do that personally because I wanted an extra layer of confidence. I feel like I had mastered the leaping off the bridge. Yes, I'm going to do this. I have the drive and passion for it. I've been out of the game for a long time. Yes, I went to school for fashion. That's fucking 20 years ago. Um, but I just wanted to make sure that I was providing the most value. So it was just a funny way and something I just wanted to bring up in case you've run into a situation is I went back and read my old email and I was like, damn, I didn't know what I was talking about. So there's always evidence that we are doing exactly the thing that we're supposed to be doing. So maybe you should go back and read some notes to yourself and also look at how you've grown too. It was just a really fun exercise. So before we hop back in, you know, just a couple orders of business. If you don't subscribe to the show, make sure you go subscribe to the show so it pops up in your favorite podcast feed every week so you never miss an episode. And if you're listening to the show right now, I'm hoping that you know that we've rebranded the show and it's new artwork and a new name and you have it saved so you don't forget And for anyone who's not listening to the show that can't find the show, I'm just going to put this out into the ether that the name is new and the art is new. So if you're wondering where we're at, that's where it is. Katie just styled, got a makeover. Well, I guess just realized got a makeover. And now we're styled for life in all aspects, not just our clothes. So make sure you subscribe to that. Follow me on Insta so you can see the amazing closet reveal. And I think I'm going to start Um, doing my weekly updates again. I used to do those back in, goddamn, probably 2019, my Fuck Yes Fridays. I don't know if they ever made it to Instagram. I used to do that in my private Facebook group. But I'm challenging myself to go live more often because it makes me nervous. So follow on Instagram at Kitty Ellen Stylist. Don't forget, for the whole month of June, I still have all of my freebie, I mean, all of my bonuses open from the Dump the Front workshop. I'm not going to go into them because there's so many juicy bonuses, like free makeup um, thrown in there, free nutrition consultation, uh, free, I can't remember, there was like five different free things, but if you don't know what I'm talking about, shoot me an email. If you've been thinking about working together, this is the month why all of those freebies are still open. Because come July, August, I'm actually going to slow down. Um, definitely going to be doing Summer Fridays. And I think in general, anything that doesn't need to be done, meaning client only, is not going to happen July and August. That's been my epiphany this week. I have a couple pod interviews. I got to move. Sorry. I love you. But I have to do this. Um, I want that time and space back with my kiddos. And that's why I started the business. But if you're interested, hit me up. This is where all the energy is going for summer. Hot mom summer is styling only, client work only. Katie at katiejuststyled.com. And last but not least, if you want to get on my amazing email newsletter, um, we're just, it's, I don't know. I have really been enjoying email way more than Insta. And I'm going to start um, continuing, not start. I'm going to continue to pour into that. And I'm doing the live videos to challenge myself to show up more on video because it's easy to hide behind the podcast, even though I am actually dressed right now. Um, I'm going to share them on my email. So sign up for that. And I'm sharing lots of fun, direct style tips in there of like favorite places to shop, what kind of bathing suits to shop, 
wear like with styles if you have a long torso if you need double d cups just like those kind of like really nitty gritty inside stylist tips then sign up for the email because that's the easiest place for me to communicate that information until i get my blog up and running so you can hop on the newsletter um at katiejustyle.com backslash freebie Well, now that I've talked for fucking 10 minutes about all the different ways that we can connect when we all know that the podcast is your favorite, let's hop in to top five tips to create the perfect travel capsule. Because vacations are amazing. I can't wait to go on some, but I fucking hate packing. Don't we all hate packing? But it cannot be hard anymore. I'm actually going to take my own advice here in a couple weeks. Sorry, I had to sip the kombucha. It's sitting right here, and it's so juicy and amazing. Speaking of which, I've been loving the Rowdy Mermaid kombucha. Uh, I don't know where it's at, but I get mine at uh, the Fresh Market. It has less sugar. And y'all know, well, I don't know if she listens, but shout out to Amber Frohnhaus, my nutritionist, or nutritional coach. I'm trying to cut back on my sugar. So Rowdy Mermaid has the lowest amount of sugar that I've had on kombucha, and I'm obsessed with kombucha. Anyways, top five tips to create the perfect travel capsule. Tip number one, always start with your shoes. Shoes, I think, are the hardest thing to pack for when you're packing, right? Because you're like, I need all these five pairs of shoes, but you don't. So we're going to start with our shoes and we're going to pick two to three pairs of shoes. And we're going to run through what those shoes should be right now. And I actually have started a little shopping board in my digital closet app that I use with all my clients, Hue and Stripe. So I will drop the link in if you want to go, if you're like, this isn't making sense through audio and I want to see the visuals. I'm going to drop the link in the show notes so you can check out the little travel capsule um, mood board, shopping board that I created. I guess it's really a lookbook. So shoe number one that we're packing, a daytime shoe. And hot fucking tip, do not, and let me say this again, do not wear a brand new daytime shoe. (laughs) Because a lot of times when we're traveling, unless you're literally going to the beach and just going to veg out on the beach all day, a lot of times when we're traveling, we're sightseeing or doing some other kind of fun activities. And there's usually a lot of walking. And you do not want your vacation day one to be sitting there. Yes, your feet are going to be tired, but we do not want blisters and all the things. I mean, it's not the time to break in the shoe. You can buy new shoes for your trip, but make sure you are breaking them in. Your daytime shoe should be something that you know is super comfortable for you that you love. So for me, my daytime shoes are obviously something that's going to be super comfortable. My go-to choice is going to be a fashion sneaker because that's personally something that I love anyway. So like when I went to New Orleans, I picked one of my favorite pair of Nikes that has lots of fun collars on it. So those are my go-tos. So fashion sneakers, those particular pair of Nikes, I think are really comfortable. Um, New Balances are really comfortable. Um, I'm trying to think. You can always do something like, and I'm going to stab my eyeballs out after I say this. Some people have told me that Birkenstocks are very comfortable. (laughs) Birkenstocks are like Crocs to me. I don't, I, they're just not my jam. But I heard they're very comfortable. And I'd be lying if I said, and somebody told me these are worse than Birkenstocks. I just got myself some Tevas. So shout out to all my Arizona peeps who might be listening. Um, I got some Tevas for a river trip that's coming up. And they're not cute, but they are comfortable. Um, they are pink, so they're as cute as Tevas can get. But... They're not cute, but I'm breaking them in. My trip's not until August. And my and I was telling them, I said, tell my son, I said, but they're comfortable. He said, but I don't care. They're ugly. And I said, I know. So you pick your comfy daytime shoe. So there is a couple of brands that I've learned about through some of my f- other amazing stylists, um, through some of the stylist networks that I am in. And one brand that I was introduced to that I think is really fun and funky that I um wasn't aware of before is a brand called Ms. Moose. It's M-I-Z-M-O-O-Z. And they have all different kinds of shoes. They have like daytime sandals, wedges, all of the things, and super fucking cute. But they're 
cushioned. So they're super comfortable, super cute, rave reviews. I don't have a pair. I have a pair in my basket that I'm eyeing and really fun colors. So there's a pink pair of leather ones that I'm eyeing because I like to have a little pop of drama in my shoe. But so daytime shoe, number one, something super comfortable. That's not brand fucking new. You have to break it in. Shoe number two is your nighttime shoe. So yes, throw in something for nighttime, but still try to keep it something that's super versatile that we only need one. So my nighttime shoe, I would definitely go with O Edge. And I have some wedge recommendations in the lookbook that are also super, super comfortable. And shoes are one of the, I get this question all the time around like, I want to invest in quality pieces, but I don't know what to invest in, blah, blah, blah. Shoes are not where we don't, Shoes are not where we pinch. Shoes are where you should be investing. And your shoes should last you four years. Okay, let me say that again. <laughs> Invest in your shoes. Comfortable shoes will make or break you. If you want to save money and you really want to invest in a trend piece and not spend a lot of money, we do that on tops and maybe some dresses. Maybe, like if there's a really cute Zara dress or somewhere, something like that. And fun accessories that we know won't last a season. And we buy them from somewhere like Zara or Bubble or something like that, where we know that, like, hey, this is probably gonna last me a season, maybe two, but that's okay because I paid 30 bucks for it. But your shoes, please, if you do anything, do not skimp on the shoes. The shoes should last you for years. And this is truly where we want quality over comfort. Don't ruin your whole vacation over trying to save 50 bucks on a pair of shoes that 50 bucks, you won't miss it. Invest in the shoe. You will thank me for it later. When you're walking around Italy or Mexico or wherever you're at this summer, you will be like, I'm so glad I took Katie's advice and broke these things in and spend the extra money. So make sure you have a solid daytime shoe. A nighttime wedge. I think wedges for summer are really easy. And you could also wear the ed a wedge in the day if you want to look super stylish in the day, but we'll get to that in a minute. And I only say pack three shoes if you need something super specific. So now if we're going on like a hiking vacation or, you know, we're going to be, I don't know, running a marathon and, and then going on vacation, bring that specific shoe. But I would really try to keep it to two to three shoes max because they also take up a fuck ton of space in your suitcase. And I don't know about you, but... I overpack all the time. And recently I didn't. We actually went on a Memorial Day trip and I fucking nailed it. And I was like, yes. And I bought one pair of shoes for the whole fucking thing. And it was amazing. All right. Tip number two. And I think this is really the winner. Start with color. So pack your shoes. And if you want to experiment with color in your shoes, then you're going to use that to create your color palette. The next, very next thing is we're going to create a color palette and we're going to keep it simple and we're going to keep it tight because a couple of things are going to happen here if we create an actual color palette. One, we're going to immediately narrow down the amount of clothes that can go in it. Two, if I have a color palette, that means every single piece of clothing I pack is going to match its counterparts. So now getting dressed is going to be super, super easy because I just made mixing and matching the easiest thing ever. And I can literally see like five client faces in my mind when I say pick your color palette. All black is not a color palette, <laughs> okay? It can be one of your core neutrals, but it's not a color palette. But the rule of thumb, something that I like to follow is two core colors, two neutral. I mean, two cores, neutrals, and two accents. And one of your two accents could be a print, so any of my like leopard print fans or plaid fans or polka dot fans, if you want that to be one of your accents, it totally can. So I have a trip coming up. I got these lime green slides. You guys know I'm like on this huge pink and green kick, right? I have a pink and green bathing suit. I have pink and green slides. I have a pink and purple um, kimono cover up, but it looks really good with the pink and green. And that's going to be my core colors. So I'm really going to go with pink and green as my accents and then white, I mean, and then black. And I think denim, I think I'm going to like put pick in denim as my other neutral 
instead of going with just a different neutral because I don't think I need it because I'm going real heavy on the pink and green. And I think the denim will help ground that. And then, of course, the black looks really, really good with the um, neon lime green that I'm choosing. Now, every single thing I pack, like I said, I've gotten the bathing suit. I got the sarong. Well, it's not a sarong. I keep calling it that. The kimono, um, some cute dresses, tops, a couple of things I've been investing in, they're all in the same color palette. The only outlier is this purple and green kimono, but this is where I'm going to let that one be the one color that brings it in. Hold on, I'm recording my podcast. Like I said, it's summertime, so we'll leave that little blooper in there for fun because I want y'all to endure this summer transition with me. And I don't want you to feel lonely if you're going through the same thing. Anyways, not exactly sure where I was (laughs) because it's been a few minutes, but I think we were talking about our color palette. So mine's really going to be pink, green, and black and denim are going to be my neutrals. And oh, I have the one purple outlier in my kimono, but it also looks amazing with my favorite fucking purple lipstick. So I'm going to do my pink and purple lipstick. And now we've brought it all back together. So that being said, the amazing part about choosing the color palette and having a really simple color palette one is super easy to pack now right because if it's not pink green black or denim it ain't going in the bag and now this summer trip is going to be my pink green and black and denim summer trip right so it's like the memories are going to be tied to this and created through this and when I look back at those photos it will just always hold a special spot because it's going to be really intentional right? I've put a lot of thought and time and effort. And I think family vacations are really, really, really important. Um, We didn't go on any when I was a kid, so not very many. This is a big thing for me. And I think it's a great way to build memories and it's a great way to create family time. And I was telling someone the story the other day around when we went to New Orleans, I was pretty intentional around it. And I packed my purple lipstick, A, because it's one of my favorite lipsticks, but also because, you know, Marty, it was the first time Marty Gras was coming back live to New Orleans since the pandemic. And, you know, purple, green, and yellow are the big Mardi Gras colors. And now it's my Mardi Gras lipstick. So now when I come home and I wear that, I think of how much fun we had, how much growth I had on that vacation. It pushed me way out of my comfort zone to like leave the kids and have to coordinate all the different people that helped make that trip possible on the back end with our kids because it wasn't just one person. And I have so many memories, so amazing memories. So tip number three, let's start building your wardrobe. So we have our shoes, done, pack, easy check. We have our colors picked out. So like now, what are we going to wear? So I would say, this is what I'm going to challenge you. Try to pick seven key pieces. You can go up to 10 if you need to, but my rule of thumb, what I'm trying to aim for is seven key pieces. And then I'm going to play this little game. And this is what I found in my email to my client back when I first started my business. And I love it, is play a little game called My Three Vibes. My three vibes is how many different ways can I wear this thing? I need three different feelings, right? So say packing the denim, right? It's a really good example. So I need three vibes for the denim. What are three different outfits that I can put together with the denim shorts? And what, where am I going in these denim outfit, in these denim shorts, right? So one is probably going to be to the beach. Maybe there's a day I love to just wear my high-rise denim shorts with my bikini top down to the pool or the beach, right? That's a total vibe. That's a total look. Then we might pop in for lunch somewhere, pop up to the um, little walk-up bar thing at the pool for lunch, and then but maybe I want to pop a shirt on. So now I'm going to get a cute tank that's going to match the shorts that's also going to look cute with my bathing suit top. So that's a third vibe. So I have the going down to the pool vibe. I have the lunch vibe. And then of course, what if I want to take the shorts to nighttime? What would I wear with that? And what's the vibe, right? So I'm trying to create three very different vibes. So I'm only going to have seven pieces. So the super easiest way to do this is going to be with my shoes. So I'm going to switch from my daytime shoes to my nighttime shoes. And then I'm going to pop in my accessories. 
accessories are going to be key here. And again, you don't have to overpack, right? So I was just doing a summer capsule wardrobe with a local retired stylist. So freaking amazing. I was so goddamn intimidated to do another stylist who has been styling for years and years and years, but it was actually awesome. And it went really, really well. And we were putting together all these outfits and all we did was change the shirt. So we had a formula. So we had perfect shoes that matched this perfect, amazing um, cuff bracelet, really bold earrings, and a great pair of jeans. And then we just rotated through a couple of different shirts that fit with all of them. All of them had completely different vibes. And I was like, oh my God, she's also packing for a trip to Italy too. So we were kind of doing two things at once. And she was like, this is daytime in Rome. Um, Walking in Rome doing this, walking doing this. You know, this is what I can wear when I go here. So you have to play with the vibes a little bit and get like really intentional. But what's the one thing that you can tweak that really, really changes it from day to night? We're picking seven key pieces. And I know a lot of you might be freaking out like, how is this possible? But listen, just hear me out. It's super possible. Pack things that can also run the double duty. So like this kimono, right? So this kimono I'm packing. I'm obviously going to wear it to the pool and to the beach. How cute is that kimono going to be with my nighttime wedges, my denim jean shorts, and just like a really cute cami at night? It's going to be my big layer piece, my conversational piece at dinner. But even though I've just worn it to the pool and the beach all day, right? So when you're picking out those pieces, get really, really intentional. And we all know that when we go on vacation, you pack like a 20 million things. And what happens? You end up wearing about the seven pieces. <laughs> so think about that as you start to create and pack. So another key thing I want to touch on here for this section is there's two ways to think about this. And it's a little bit of a challenge. Don't pack things that you don't wear at home, that you don't love. So don't pack things that you don't love and think that you're going to love it on vacation. Chances are if you don't love it at home, you're not going to love it on vacation. However, there's lots of things that we have in our closet that we feel like we can't wear at home. So like I live in a very unique small town and there are things that I don't feel comfortable wearing because I just don't. I'm working on that. And oh, I have a whole podcast episode on that for you. A big Allen household change. And I really think it's because I wore this one particular dress in the town. Anyways, back to my point is I heard this. I was on a travel um, session with some other stylists and we were sharing notes. And this one girl who does this all the time was like, a lot of my clients like to have a fling with fashion when they're traveling, right? It's like we get to tap into this other version of ourselves. So they will dress maybe a little bit sexier or they'll push the limits a little bit more. Perfect fucking example. If you've seen the photos I posted of my boobs from New Orleans. <laughs> well, that doesn't sound good. <laughs> the dress I wore in New Orleans where it showed a lot of cleavage. Let me rephrase that. Um, you're probably laughing your ass off right now. And it was very intentional, right? I was like, I can get away with wearing the super deep V dress in New Orleans because it's New Orleans um, and showing a little cleavage and things like that. But when I wore that, like something just like shifted in my brain. I was like, this is dumb. I can wear this anywhere I want, right? But it really took me going on vacation to make that shift. So just to recap, the wardrobe piece, because I feel like this is the biggest piece, is we're aiming for seven pieces and we want to create 21 outfits. That's a really standard rule of thumb in the stylist industry when people are packing for a five to seven day trip because we're going to play the my three vibes game and you're trying to come up with three looks for each bottom, right? Because changing out your tops, that's the easy part. So three looks for each bottom that give you different vibes and every shirt that you pack should give you a different vibe, but you should also pack key things that can tra transition and do double duty from day to night, right? So think of like a traditional maxi dress that, again, you wear it in the daytime to the beach and then you rinse it out, hang it to dry or run it in the dryer if you have time and put on your wedges and your cute earrings and maybe throw on a kimono and wear it to dinner. Think of those key pieces that you can wear in multiple ways and don't be afraid because you have nothing to lose. And like my stylist friend said, have a fling with fashion. 
but really focus on the pieces that can do double duty and play the game My Three Vibes with every piece you pick. Tip number four, because we are going very minimal and we want to maximize our wardrobe, the other thing that comes up a ton is wrinkles. I feel like we're about to get interrupted again. I can hear the little feet coming in the bedroom. <laughs> or that might be the AC guy. If that's the AC guy, that's okay. Um, Wrinkle-free fabrics. So we're going to pick things that are really easy to pack, but we really want to focus on wrinkle-free fabrics. So denim. I mentioned denim. That's wrinkle-free. Jersey knit. So any of your cotton shirts that have stretch might be like a jersey knit. You can look in the tag if you want to, but you don't want anything that's 100% cotton. Think of all your 100% cotton graphic tees that you have that you might fold up, how wrinkly they are when you unfold them. Nothing that's 100% cotton, nothing that's 100% linen. This is where you definitely wanna lean into your blends. So you can get a linen cotton blend that will work. But, and like the jersey cotton blends and anything like that that has a little, maybe a little um, spandex in the cotton, anything that has a little stretch that's not stiff or tight should be should be um, wrinkle-free. Just check the labels is what I was trying to say. Double check the labels. So you're going to look for things like your jersey knits, polyesters. I have a polyester skirt with rayon lining and it's a pleated green skirt. If you followed me for any amount of time, you've seen it. I fucking love it. It's an amazing skirt. It has pleats and everything. And I've taken that on a couple of vacations and it does. I will roll it. I will shove it in a boot. No matter what I do, it doesn't wrinkle at all. It will come with me on so many vacations just because. Um, another manufactured fabric tinsel like I have tinsel sheets that don't wrinkle so but I think the fabric is actually called Lyocell if I'm not mistaken but the brand name is tinsel so that's another fabric to look for and I'm telling you specific fabric so you can literally go in your closet if you're not familiar with this and look at the tags but my favorite trick like I said you can um Rinse it. You want fabrics that are easy to rinse out in the sink hang dry but won't wrinkle while they're doing that but a hot tip, and you may already know this, but hot tip when you're in a pinch, I always take a empty water bottle on vacation and then fill it up with water when I get there. We have a lot of curly hair in my family, so we're always doing touch-ups on the curly hair. So I always have one with me. But you can take that same water bottle or any water spray bottle on vacation and spray your clothes. Give them a solid shake let them they're not usually going to be really wet but you can let them sit there for five minutes and wrinkle free it's an easy quick way to get all of your wrinkles out of your clothes so if i know i have something that maybe is not completely wrinkle free that looks like it just needs a little touch up like something that would benefit from a quick stain when we go somewhere i always unpack and i get those items out and get the water bottle and i fill it up and i do that shake it out hang it up by the time i'm ready to wear it good to go right so that's a hot tip. And number five, just two things that I always remind people of because I have been in this position myself and it has come up on two calls now that um, I've been talking to different people about our travel packing sessions. And it is always pack a raincoat or some kind of versatile jacket that you can use in a pinch, especially if you're doing sightseeing kind of traveling maybe not beach vacation because or pool because you're already wet anyway it doesn't matter so that's where your anorak jackets come in that are really handy you know the ones that have the strong collar and you can unroll the um hood roll it back in it has a cinched waist so it looks good on almost everyone who's trying to create the waist now you can play on the length with some of those to make sure it does fit your body shape but that would be my recommendation is make sure that you have that and crossbody purses crossbody purses are amazing for traveling especially when you're doing lots of walking even if you're going hiking I don't care. I always take a crossbody with me. Almost even if I spend the day at fucking a theme park, I love to take a crossbody. It's an easy way to, and it adds a look to the look, but it's an easy way to like put all your items in. Fanny packs are coming back, so you could get a fanny pack too. But the reason I was going to say around crossbodies, if you get a crossbody that has removable straps, now the crossbody has served as your nighttime clutch. 
Now we're doing double duty. Now we only need one bag. Now, another way to get some double duty is pack a cute carry-on, like a personal item bag. So maybe take your beach bag and not like your carry-on like suitcase, but like your personal item. You know how you can do your carry-on suitcase that goes above in the bin and then you can always have the bag that you slide under the seat. If you have a cute beach bag that you want to take, if you are going on a beach vacation and the crossbody is not like the biggest deal, even though I still think it's good for nighttime, take your beach bag pack a couple of snacks or whatever the thing is, that books, whatever you want to use on the plane to entertain yourself and use that as your personal carry-on item, then you don't have to pack that as a bag as well. So I think that's all five of my tips. Always start with your shoes. Always start with your shoes. Oh, also make sure you have packing cubes. Packing cubes are queen. Always make sure that you have your dirty laundry bag. So when you're flying home, you can always pack. If it's not a summer vacation or if you're packing your tennis shoes, I will pack socks, underwear, scarves, rungs, like anything little into my shoes, or I will pack my jewelry into my shoes. I will put it in a separate case and then put it in my shoes, vitamins, um, anything that's small like that that toiletries that don't spill, right? So that's what I was thinking, vitamins, different things like that I will put in my um, day shoe if I'm packing a fashion sneaker. So always start with your shoe. Two, create your color palette. That will make it so much easier, dude, because if you pick a color, and maybe black, it's not the color that's gonna be easy if your whole wardrobe is black. But like in my case, I really am being inspired by the bathing suit that I got for an anniversary gift to build the capsule. But that's going to be the core color. So two core colors, two accent colors, or a print. Build the wardrobe. Play my three vibes. What three vibes can I create with this bottom? Try to keep it to seven pieces and see if you can come out with 21 different outfits. Then you will completely be set for a seven-day vacation. And I mean, literally, you could probably get that all in your carry-on. And now you only have to check a bag. Then you can fly breeze and you're good to go. Number four, make sure you're checking the labels for wrinkle-free fabrics because we're not ironing on vacation. Come on. That's not, we're not cooking. We're not ironing. Those are two things I ain't doing. I don't care if we're at the goddamn beach rent a house. Someone else is cooking. It ain't going to be me. And number four, make sure you have those accessories. I like to bring the raincoat, not necessarily the umbrella and my crossbody and make sure that everything I'm bringing is double duty. I hope that you enjoyed this. I feel like I was rambling on a little bit about travel um, packing, but if you're looking for visuals or recommendations, I have started a little lookbook in my digital closet app that I use just for my clients. I will put the link in the show notes. And if there's something that you're looking for, I have suitcase recommendations. I have travel packing cube recommendations as well. Hit me up anytime. Insta is Katie Allen Stylist and or email me katie at katie just styles i hope you and guys enjoyed today's episode also make sure you hit me up on one of those two channels to let me know what other style tips you would like me to share what other things would you like me to go really deep into um i've had some reach outs around an episode on perimenopause around body changes and accepting that and sizing and numbers. So if that's something that um, you guys want to go through, let me know. I think it's an amazing topic, but I will tell you right now, I'm not subscribing to age. So age is not the number. I'm not playing that game. We can talk about body changes and things like that, but I'm not playing the I'm too old to game. I just styled my retired client the other day who was 67 (laughs) and she said she wished she everyone does right but she wished that she appreciated the body she had 20 years ago and she's really working really hard to appreciate the body she has right now because when she's 90 she wants to look back at her 67 year old self and say god damn I was killing it and that's my inspiration I want to be like that when I grow up so thanks for tuning in love you to pieces i will see you on the flip side Thank you.